The highest paying data analyst jobs are the ones that no one ever talks about. And you might not want to hear this, but boring actually pays better than the popular ones. While everyone's chasing over the glamorous AI engineers, data scientists, and machine learning engineer titles, there's a whole category of data analyst roles that companies literally cannot fill fast enough. Why? Because most people don't even know they exist, or worse, they think they're too boring to even consider. But here's something that I have learned after helping over a thousand people land data analyst roles for the past three and a half years. The boring jobs are where the real money lives. Less competition, higher demand, and companies are so desperate to fill them, sometimes they even train you on the job. Now, if this is your first time here, I'm Kadisha, and five years ago, I was delivering pizzas and Amazon packages for $8 an hour, and today I am running a community of over 60,000 current and aspiring data professionals, and I have helped over a thousand other career changers break into data analytics without going back to school and wasting money on courses that just don't work. And I have watched this career field transform in real time. And my only goal is to help you cut through all the noise and endless information online to get exactly where you want to be in the least amount of time as possible. Now let's dive into these five data analyst jobs before someone else takes your spot. First up, the data governance analyst role. And I know what you're thinking, governance, that kind of sounds pretty boring. Exactly, that's why it can pay between 85K to 130K a year. And here's what you actually do. You're the one who turns data chaos into control. You own the policies, the standards, and the quality checks that make sure a company's data isn't complete garbage. Think of it being like a bouncer at an exclusive club, but instead of checking IDs, you're checking for data quality. And companies are desperate for this, why? Because on average, bad data can cost companies about $13 million a year on average. One wrong number on a financial report, that can be a lawsuit. One privacy breach, that can be millions in fines. So what you need to know, SQL for data profiling and quality checks, Python for automated validation, you need to understand frameworks like the data management body of knowledge. This is basically the Bible for data management best practices. Think of it like the rule book that tells you how to handle data without screwing everything up. And then here's a kicker. You also need to understand privacy regulations, the general data protection regulation or GDPR. That's a European law that can fine companies a lot of money for mishandling data, the California Consumer Privacy Act. That's basically the California's version and it's spreading to other states fast. The pros, high demand, low competition, and you're literally hard to fire because companies really need you for compliance. The cons, it's not sexy, you're not building AI miles all day, but you are building an AI-proof six-figure career in the making. For an opportunity score, I'm gonna give an 8.5 out of 10. Why? Because with an aging workforce, that means tons of governance analysts are retiring. Gen Z might think it's too boring to pursue, their loss, your gain. Number two, risk management analyst. This is a job where you can get paid 75K to upwards to 140K. Your entire job, running models that answer what's the worst thing that can happen for banks, insurance companies, or fintech. You're basically a fortune teller with Excel and Python. And before you say, hey, I'm not good at math, let me stop you right there. You don't need to be a math genius. You just need to understand probability, Monte Carlo simulations, and just know your way around stress testing. And here's what makes this role so golden. Every financial institution needs risk analysts. It's not optional, it's actually required by law. The skills that you need, statistics and probability basics. Python or R for scenario analysis and SQL for pulling credit and claims data. The pros here, very stable. Banks aren't going anywhere. Regular hours, no client drama. The cons, it can be repetitive. You're running similar models over and over, but honestly, that's what makes it easy to master over time. The opportunity score, I'm going to give an 8 out of 10. Growing demand and strict regulations mean job security, and most people are just too intimidated by the term risk when they even apply. Third, market marketing data analyst. And no, this isn't the sexy growth hacker or growth operator role that everyone talks about now on the internet. This is the behind the scenes number cruncher making between 70K to 120K plus to tell marketers their campaigns aren't working and why. Your job, clean up attribution chaos, figure out which ads actually drive sales and keeping customer acquisition costs from spiraling out of control. You're basically the reality check in a room full of creative people who think every idea is brilliant, when in reality, it's not. But here's the thing that makes this role complex. The modern customer journey today is a complete nightmare to track. It's not just ads anymore. Someone may see your TikTok, read your blog, gets retargeted on Instagram, watches through YouTube videos, 
clicks a Google ad and then finally buys two or three weeks later from an email. Good luck figuring out exactly what drove that sale. So now you're tracking organic content performance, paid ads, influencer posts, SEO traffic, email campaigns, and somehow connecting all of those dots into one coherent story. The customer journey used to be a straight line. Now it's a spaghetti and you're the one that's going to entangle it. So here's why companies are desperate for this. Marketing budgets are actually getting slashed everywhere. CMOs in every business need someone who can prove ROI for every dollar spent. Enter you, the person who can make sense of it all. What do you need? SQL across multiple data sources, Google ads, meta ads, TikTok, CRM systems, content platforms, Python for some testing and automations. And you need to understand metrics like customer acquisition costs, lifetime value, return on ad spend, not to just make calculations, but to explain exactly why they matter and the decisions that need to be made. The tools that you need, it could be BigQuery or Snowflake for data warehousing, Tableau or Power BI for dashboards, or even Excel. But here's the thing, you don't need to be a marketing expert. You just need to know how to analyze customer behavior and their buying journeys today. Now, I know this sounds overwhelming, but that's why in my program, I actually provide a marketing analyst consulting internship where my my students work with me and my team on real attribution problems, real marketing data, and make real ROI calculations. Because theory is one thing, but when you've untangled a multi-channel attribution system and presented that to stakeholders, that's when you become valuable. And that's when companies stop seeing you as a beginner and start seeing you as someone who can actually solve their problems. The pros here, always in demand because companies always need to market. Lots of variety and no campaigns are the same. The cons, Marketers will always blame you when the campaigns fail. You will probably rebuild the same attribution model five times because someone just doesn't like their results. The opportunity score here, I'm gonna give a 7.5 out of 10. High demand, but way more competition than the other roles. But still, if you can prove that you understand the data and the dollars, you're golden. Number four, operations reporting analyst. This is the person making between 65 to 110K to be the single source of truth when it comes to how a business is actually running. You own the KPIs, you own the dashboards and the reports that executives check every morning with their coffee. If the CEO wants to know why shipping costs went up 3% last quarter, you're the one with the answer. And here's why this role is secretly powerful. You see everything. Every department's metrics flow through you. You understand the entire business, not just one piece. And that's the career rocket fuel. The skills, Excel power user. Talking Power Query, Power Pivot, the works. SQL for pulling data, Power BI and Tableau for executive dashboards. And you need to understand operational metrics. But here's something that also really matters. You need to know how to think in systems. How does a delay in procurement maybe affect customer satisfaction? How does employee turnover impact production cost? You're connecting the dots that others don't even see. The pros, you really become indispensable to the business. You know where all the bodies are buried and this is a clear path to senior leadership. The cons, when the systems break, you're usually the first call. Lots of ad hoc requests from executives that needed answers yesterday. Opportunity score, I'm giving a nine out of 10. Every company needs this and most people don't want to do it because it sounds boring, but boring is where the opportunity lives. So last but definitely not least is the financial analyst. This isn't your typical finance role. This is an 80K to even 150K role being the bridge between data and dollars. Yes, you're building financial models, but you're also pulling data from multiple systems, automating forecasts and creating driver-based models that actually predict the future instead of hoping for the best. And here is something that no one talks about. It's one of the few analyst roles that AI can't really touch. Why? AI actually isn't that good at reading between the lines of financial statements. It can't spot when management is being sketchy with their accounting. It can't tell when numbers are technically correct, but completely misleading. And that's where you come in. You're not just crunching numbers, but you're actually detecting BS. You're asking why revenue recognition suddenly changed. You're questioning why inventory turnover dropped, but management says everything is fine. AI may see the numbers, but you see the story behind them. Companies are desperate for this hybrid skill set. They have finance people who can't code and they have data people who don't understand accounting. But you, you can speak both languages. So what do you need? Basic accounting knowledge. 
P&Ls, cash flow, balance sheets, Excel modeling skills, SQL, and then Python for automation and forecasting. But the real power move, understanding unit economics, not just revenue and costs, but contribution margin per customer, working capital cycles, cohort-based revenue forecasting. This is what separates those making six figures and those who are not. The pros here, the highest earning potential of all five roles. Direct path to CFO if you play your cards right and you're interested in executive leadership and exposure to strategic decisions. The cons, month and close can be pretty brutal. Lots of pressure during planning cycles. And if your forecast is wrong, everyone knows it. The opportunity score here, I'm giving a nine out of 10. The combination of finance and data skills is rare. Most finance people are scared of code and most data people are scared of accounting. So be both and you're unstoppable. So there you have it, the five boring data analyst jobs that no one's talking about, but everyone should be pursuing. Everyone else is fighting over the same entry-level data analyst positions or the fancy titled AI or data science positions, but you could be walking into these roles with less competition and higher pay. The question isn't whether these opportunities exist. They do. The question is whether you're willing to go after them. Because here's the truth. I've learned this after years in the field. Boring pays the bills. Boring builds wealth. And boring gives you the freedom to do exciting things with your life outside of work. So if you're ready to stop competing with everyone else and start targeting these high paying, low competition roles, I've got something for you. Click the link in the description for my free training on exactly how to position yourself for these roles, build the right skills in the right order and land your first role in data in the next six months. Because someone is going to fill these positions and it might as well just be you. I'll see you in the next one.